Greetings, world, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit. This is episode 15. I'm Dr. Dorina Shine, and I'm so grateful that you're here with me today. You know, I just want to talk about a conversation for those who may be wondering um, about how the world of nonprofit works. You know, how do you make profit in a nonprofit industry? How do you empower yourself to move forward daily and be consistent? So today, I just want to say welcome to everyone who is here. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing this podcast. We're talking about the city of Youngstown, Ohio. Now, in the city of Youngstown, Ohio, we're going to talk today to those residents. And for those far away, thank you for embracing and enjoying the information and the podcast, and may you find something helpful here. But I'm specifically talking about the city of Youngstown and the nonprofit world. So the science of helping out uh, came to me. And, you know, it's important to do research and stay up on what it is that you value most so you can grow with it, so you can empower yourself and empower others with ideas, okay? Okay. So the science of helping out, this was an article by the New York Times back in 2020. I went back there because that was a time where ideas were at its most critical point. People were, you know, focused on the pandemic, what was going to happen, the world shut down. So this was published April 9th. So you can imagine what we were doing around that time. So as a nonprofit in Youngstown, Ohio, March the, uh, let me see, June 10th, 2019, we received our Articles of Incorporation and State Certification. So by mm, March, we were shut down. Nine months, we were shut down. We had begun a community kitchen. The Youngstown Community Center had also begun a uh, adult day service program. And we were like really excited. Okay. But for some apparent reason, we had to, the world shut down. We didn't have to shut down because as far as the governor was concerned, as long by us being our own nonprofit, a lot of people didn't understand that you didn't really have to shut down. You just have to be more aware and alert of situations of COVID happening in the location. So you had to do more cleaning, more um, individualizing individuals who came in. So we stayed open. We continued to do our uh, feeding program, our clothing program, our resource program. We helped some businesses get up and running. Um, I know specifically um, a braiding company uh, who is, you know, still in its early stages because they had to stop. Um, So... Helping others during this time was severe, okay? And little did we know, as a nation, the more we helped, the better we felt. And so this wonderful woman, Tara Parker, Pope, she published an article in the New York Times. I'm going to read a little bit, but I'm going to talk about Youngstown Community Center personally, So at a time when we are all experiencing extraordinary levels of stress, the article reads, science offers a simple and effective way to bolster our own emotional health. To help yourself, start by helping others. So to help yourself, start by helping others. Powerful, right? Very powerful. So I like this article and I want to share it with you because that's what we did. We kept in the trenches. We continued to help others and it did. It made a huge difference. It empowered us to keep moving forward. 
I found that in a nonprofit organization, when you are self-fulfilling and self-motivated, it doesn't work. And that's in any business. If you don't have a passion to build your brand without you being the one in front and center, move out the way. This is what I want and this is what I want to make and this is what I'm doing and you provide 90% of the income to yourself, then it's all twisted. It's not going to work. It's not. So much of the scientific research on resilience, which is our ability to bounce back from adversity, great point has shown that having a sense of purpose and giving support to others has a significant impact on our well-being. At this point, we started working with individuals, asking them to give $5 donation, $10 donation, or something, you know, a membership, building a membership for the Youngstown Community Center at that time. Um, And those who gave were phenomenally empowered. They're, they they were inspired. You know, I just had a conversation with one of my biggest sponsors and uh, members, monthly members, Mr. Brad Pavone. And he's a veteran and he constantly impacts us with, you know, here, here's a, here's a vacuum cleaner. We need to do this. We need to open a sanctuary and begin a, a daily meditation so people can come They can, you know, lay their burdens down and begin to heal. And I think that's a wonderful and great idea. So Brad, shout out to you. Um, And that's what we're going to start to do. But anyway, there's a lot of evidence that one of the best anti-anxiety medications available is generosity. Giving, you know, I was just looking up some research about a, a fundraiser and it had to do with a uh, how this local high school got together, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, and they competed on how to bring in more, more money than the other class. And so they did this dance. They had a dance, but in doing the dance, there were other smaller projects that they received um, support from. And the community was so reaching to them, so empowering them. They were all a part of it. And it was so beautiful. And that's one thing that I would like to suggest to the city of Youngstown to be more involved in going around and meeting other organizations because there are times that when you run, I know when I run as director of the programming department of the Youngstown Community Center, when I run programs, I'm unavailable to go to other programs. Well, of course, if I am running a whole organization I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to have to limit myself to the outside world on certain things. So you must come to me in order to understand what we do and work together. And then as we build the rapport, I'll work with you, you'll work with me. And that's how the organizations empower themselves, right? And this is how it's being done in bigger cities and even smaller Um, organizations, but we have to have the niche that makes people come to us based on our mission. And those are where our advertisement should come from. I know I'm finding this out because I'm in the extensive advertising position. And that's what I'm finding. So back to this feel-good generosity thing. An organizational psychologist at Wharton, an author of Give and Take, A Revolutionary Approach to Success, Adam Grant says, the great thing about showing up for other people is that it doesn't cost a whole lot or anything at all, and it ends up being beneficial to the giver. This gives me, you know, the one person that comes to mind in my world, there's two, is Captain Janet Johnson and um, Miss Lily. Miss Lily and Captain Johnson are awesome individuals who come and they just give. They give, give, give. 
and they give their time, which is very valuable and very, very important, you know, and I thank them. And there are so many more volunteers, but and 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 people who have supported us over time. Um, however, I just want to point out a few because those are the ones that's coming to mind. There's going to be other videos where I'm going to definitely say that, oh, this person definitely gave so much to commitment. Like when I think about building Operation Hope 22, which is another nonprofit that um, I, I help run, I realized that in that stage, you know, Mr. Brown, Miss Shine, you know, they helped tremendously. Javier, you know, these people really gave of commitment. And I mean, they made it a game <laughs> to see how to change a hoarder's house into a home that's livable, you know? So it was amazing. It was a great experience. So our bodies and minds benefit in a variety of ways when we help others. And some research has focused on a helper's high. Now, I just think that I'm just a, a happy person. So running a nonprofit for me is very fulfilling, very rewarding. The more that I assist individuals through business proposals, through uh, helping them to achieve, you know, tenancy and move myself, I find my business development LLC moving extremely around the vibration of, you know, um, how can I say, just being happy, knowing that I'm giving good advice, knowing that people are truly growing and benefiting, no matter how uh, they take the information. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And based upon the tone in which the listener hears me say it, it depends on their emotional standpoint. So I can't be worried about that. I just have to get the information out the best that I know how. So, you know, I had a conversation with one of my uh, LLC companies and I asked the director, the CEO of that company, what is the best way of responding, you know, to your leadership style. Now we can do that as well. We can help people build because that's giving too. Giving advice is giving. So I was told that it was important to um, focus on it from a employer employee position. And I thought about it and I said, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, however, in my world, as you know, who I am, I'm looking at independent contractors knowing and being already where I am. And so it was highly important for me to take that advice and use it for the leadership styles of individuals who are coming on. Yes, they have an LLC. Yes, they're a business owner. Yes. They have, you know, registered with the state of Ohio. Yes. They know something about a business plan. Yes. They are in the trenches working to support their baby. However, just like when you go to the doctor, the mother can't give the baby the immunization shots. The nurse has to. Why? Because the nurse is more skilled at knowing where to poke the baby, how much immunization to give to support, you know, health and wellness, okay? And it's the same thing as developers of businesses. They have to know specifically that this is what they're doing to help. And if you can't see your organizations or companies grow, maybe they're not growing to its fullest potential, but if they're not growing every day, and you're doing something wrong. And just because you don't see people in a parking lot, business can be happening 
I mean, multi million dollar movements in business for other people can be happening. So these are things of helping and researching and being on top of what it is that we do. So donating money, um, charitable contributions, contact calls, um, cold calls, uh, going to knock on doors, you know, uh, vetting and different things like that are very, very important. And donating to causes, whether you're, you know, there or not, giving that contribution is highly beneficial to keep the organization running. So I'm grateful for all my uh, sponsors, my grantors, my donors, my my vetters, uh, Chase Bank. Um, we have vetted with them as well. I mean, it's just a, a feel-good situation. So studies of volunteers show that do-gooders had lower levels of stress hormone cortisol on days they did volunteer work. It's not as stressful. The challenge many of us are facing is how close to come when dealing with individuals because of COVID and the pandemic and the scare that occurred. That's very important. And I get it because our day adult day service program, it has run, you know, over time, but never to the point if a if a a pandemic had not have taken place, we probably would have become not the leader because you know everyone knows in the city of Youngstown, Easter Seals is the leader um for day programming because they've been around 45, 55 years. You know, we have no (laughs) competition with them. But I do say that it's vital that we bring life back together um, now that we can breathe a little bit better and keep our areas very, very clean. That's all we have to do. Another great thing I found, especially during the pandemic, was that we never had a pan, uh, COVID uh, scare in our building. Nobody during 2020, 2021, 2022, or 2023 caught COVID from our building. Yes, many didn't show up a lot when they felt a cough, a sneeze, a cold, a chill. We did our uh, temperature checks. We did our sanitizing, you know, expectation when walking through the door. And we just had those guidelines and people truly followed them. So I really and truly gratefully thank the community for being a part of that. Even those people coming to just pick up food, it was phenomenal that they themselves honored. Well, I can't come in today. I'm coughing um, and my daughter is running a fever. Da, 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 da. They could have just been selfish and said, I'm going to get the food. But that's the power of community and doing things in a way that looks out for other people. Volunteers have done things as small as come in and just sit down and have a conversation all the way to giving phone calls um, to our people to let them know that we're having an event, what's going on, give them a little background of who we are. Uh, Some people have sent out emails for us. Some people have given advice or just, again, been there. The act of giving advice has been shown to be more beneficial than receiving it. So be advice givers. So in a series of studies of 2,274 people, researchers from the University of Pennsylvania and the University of Chicago found that after middle school students mentored younger students about studying, they ended up spending more time on their own homework. Overweight people who counseled others on weight loss were 
more motivated to lose weight themselves. Wow. This is great. So Dr. Grant said we often are better at giving advice to people other than ourselves. One of the best things you can do is call someone else facing a similar situation and talk them through it. That's what Dr. Grant is saying here. Networking platforms um, are very good. It connects people for the purpose of asking for and giving support and advice. And that's what the Youngstown Community Center is all about, bringing together conversations like the aftermath of the pandemic. Come in and talk to us about what that has done to you. Did you find yourself um, catching COVID and did that affect you? Did it affect your employment? Did it did it affect your did it affect your health? Did it, you know, take a loved one? I mean, these are conversations that will reduce the stress of fear of having it happen again. So this is what we're about as well, the COVID conversation. So every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can walk into the community center and just talk to us about your personal opinion. And that personal opinion will be brought into a conversation with Ohio State University, who's putting together a research study that is going to impact the individuals who suffered most from hard-hitting community. Um, who was hit the most during the COVID pandemic. Housing, you know, people lost their housing. Moratoriums were not yet given to other people. So people were thrown out of their living conditions during a crisis, a world war. That's what I call it. <clears throat> so please feel free to um, join our Facebook page at Youngstown Community Center. Like us, follow us, and you'll see all the updated things we're doing there, the activities that's coming up. Our Mother's Day luncheon is coming May the 13th from 11 to 4. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be giving honor to our mothers. Some of us have lost our parents, so this is a great time, especially for me, to give back to community and say, Come to me, come to our location and share your love with your daughter and as daughter and mother, share your story so others will be empowered, will be inspired. So if you're in the Youngstown, Ohio, Ohio area, please come through and um, help someone that day. The cost of the luncheon is $10 and it goes to benefit our uh, community pantry for us to do other meals for the homeless um, and provide free event dinners. So that blesses us, you know, so to bless others. But yeah, this article, The Science of Helping Out from the New York Times, you can actually go online and read the whole article. It's by Tara Parker and um, it was published April 9th, 2020. So yeah, so this is the uh, Chronicles of a Nonprofit episode 15, Helping Others. And I hope that you gained something from it. If you did, please leave something in the comment box below. Please subscribe to this channel to get more information when you see Chronicles of a Nonprofit um, being posted so you won't miss a podcast. As always, thank you so much for being here. I'm Dr. Dorina Shine, and stay consistent. Bye.